We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. Uh, we're everywhere. It's Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way is for questions to come through the website. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. Today, we've got some game recommendations because it's not because not enough people are asking, what are some great games by Black Game Design? So with everything that's going on in the world today, I thought it would be a good time to use our platform to help spread the word about some of the amazing Black Game Designers out there. People creating fantastic tabletop gaming content. Now, this list is going to feature a mix of board games, card games, and role-playing games. So we're looking at all types of tabletop here. There are many ways to support ongoing efforts in communities, and I know many of us have used financial means to support causes directly already. But we can also continue to enjoy some of our hobbies without ignoring the need to keep supporting these activities. And by knowing about and supporting underrepresented populations, we can let the market know that they are wanted and needed in the marketplace. All right, first up, I want to highlight Harlem Unbound. This is a 1920s New York City setting book for Call of Cthulhu and or Gumshoe, which is a, a alternate Call of Cthulhu, Trail of Cthulhu uses that system. Harlem Unbound comes from the mind of Chris Spivey, who has done work on other Call of Cthulhu books, Geist, Chill, and City of Mist, along with some other designers that worked with him, including Bob Geist, Sarah E. Hood, Alex Mayo, Neil Raymond, Prince, and Ruth Tillman. Now, to sell this one, instead of give you, give you a, a short spiel, I want to read this from the back of the book, because this made me want to play. New York City in the 1920s. Prohibition is in full swing, and bootleggers are living high. African Americans flee the oppressive South for greener pastures, creating a new culture in Harlem. The music of Fats Waller and Duke Ellington pours out of the city's windows and doorways, and the sidewalks are crowded with women in stylish skirts and silk stockings, and men in white gloves and Chesterfield coats. There's a feeling of possibility in the air like never before. But even in this land of promise, Harlem is a powder keg. While classes and cultures collide, love crafty and horrors lurk beneath the streets, creeping through dark alleys and hidden doorways into the dreamlands. What great old one shattered our reality? Can you hold it together and keep the mythos at bay for one more song? Now, I'm not much of a mystery or Cthulhu gamer, but I got to hear Chris speak last year at Breakout Con. I thoroughly enjoy his knowledge on topics uh, all about game and game design. And so that is Harlem Unbound by Chris Spivey, Spivey and others. I think it's Spivey. I think I've got that right. Yep, Spivey. <laughs> Up next, we got Tattoo Stories. Now, during our last episode, I reviewed a new light strategy game from Bicycle Cards called The Alpha. And I noted during that show that The Alpha was part of a second wave of board games released from Bicycle. Now, this is the card game company trying to get into hobby board gaming markets. Well, Tattoo Stories was part of the first wave that was released in 2019, early in 2019. Uh, this game was designed by Eric Slauson, who also worked on Nerd Words and recently published Monstrosity with a draw monster, right? Monstrosity. Now, Tattoo Stories is a drawing party game, but what it does is it mixes the drawing with pitched-based storytelling, where you get a random set of cards that you have to base a tattoo on it, and then you have three minutes to ask the person who drew the cards what they want their tattoo to look like it, and then everyone has to draw that tattoo and explain why they use the words. So it's kind of a mashup of Pictionary and like, but wait, there's more, or Snake Oil, which just sounds really neat. Yeah, I have to say this one looks like a great party game. I know when I first saw it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about uh, the bicycle game, my first thought was this is one of those great, you know, 2 a.m. at Extra Life when everyone's already a little giggly to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it would just add to that and, and really be a, a fun play at that. That is Tattoo Stories by Eric Slauson. All right, back on the RPG side of things, we come to the first role-playing game that I played with my kids back when they were preschoolers. Uh, that game is Mermaid Adventures by Aloy LaSanta. Now, I first discovered Aloy on Facebook when he was promoting a Canadian supplement for his game, Apocalypse Prevention, Inc. Now, since then, he's taken the Mermaid Adventures system and turned that into the PIP system with its own PIP system source book, like a basically a generic rule, rule set. Uh, he's also worked on Geist, Changeling, Camp Myth, 
and nowadays is probably best known for his AMP series of superhero RPGs. Now, for some more info on Mermaid Adventures, stick around after our main topic, because when we get to the review segment, I will be talking all about it. And it's been talked about many times on previous episodes as well. If you'd like to hear further thoughts on it, that's Mermaid Adventures by Eloy Santa. All right, I have been a Warhammer fan, uh, Warhammer Old World fan for by Games Workshop since the late 80s, pretty much since it came out. Uh, anyone watching live can see the pile of Warhammer and White Dwarf behind me. I am a huge War Warhammer, I would say, fanboy. Now... I love the old world and I love the struggle against chaos. I love the fact that it was the fight when, when to survive another day, knowing you'll never win the war against chaos. There was something about that that always appealed to me. Well, this game turns that fight around and has you playing the four gods of chaos. That game is chaos in the old world by Eric M. Lang. Now I probably don't have to introduce Eric M. Lang to you. He's one of the most well-known designers in the gaming industry, and he happens to be probably the best known black designer. He is probably better known for games other than chaos in the old world. It's actually one of his earlier games. It just happens to be my favorite, but you're going to recognize titles like blood rage rising sun, and most recently Marvel United. Now, Eric has gone so far that he is now the director of game design at Cool Mini or Not. Now, despite being one of Eric's earliest games, I love P P Chaos in the Old World. And part of it is the fact it's Warhammer, right? I love Warhammer. But the other thing is this is the first game that I know of, poss possibly the, the ones before it, but had completely asymmetric winning conditions where every player, each of the four chaos gods was trying to do something different to win the game. They each had different goals that competed with each other, which I thought was fascinating. And while anyone who listens to our show for any amount of time knows, I love my asymmetry. Indeed we do. Uh, so that was a big shout out, Eric M. Lang, but specifically chaos in the old world. Yeah. All right. Up next, something near future and, as the days go on, getting a little closer and closer to home, it seems, and that is Cyberpunk. Now, growing up a gamer, one of my favorite games of all time was Cyberpunk. Now, in particular, I played and owned Cyberpunk 2020, and then some of the spinoffs that came out, right? Cyber Generation, Bubblegum Crisis, and so on, as well as many of the other Artelsorian interlock and fusion system games. Now, what I did not realize reading these books um, before the days of the internet was that Mike Pondsmith, the founder of Artelsorian Games and the designer of Cyberpunk, is black. Now, in addition to Cyberpunk, Mike also worked on Castle Falkenstein. Uh, this one really surprised me. The Buck Rogers 25th Century RPG from TSR, a Dragon Ball Z RPG, and a bunch of other books using the fusion system. Now, despite coming out in the late 80s, uh, Cyberpunk's still going strong. It's still there. There is a new edition of the RPG out that's called Cyberpunk Red. And there's a very hyped and hot-looking video game coming out uh, eventually. This one seems to be getting delayed quite a bit. Uh, Cyberpunk has always been one of my favorite genres. And I love the fact that this one's still going, that Artel Sorian is still very active in the industry and in the market. I gotta say, sometimes it feels like we're dancing a bit too close to the wrong parts of cyberpunk in the real world right now, but I do yeah. still love the genre, both for reading and playing. So that is Mike Pondsmith with Cyberpunk, the founding of Artel Sorian. Do you hear some buzzing? Because our next game is Bees. I think that's five E's if you want to look that one up. There'll be a link in our show notes to all these games. Uh, this was published in 2017 by Action Phase Games. Uh, this one was designed by Marcus Ross and Kara Ryan. Uh, this team also worked together on Discount Salmon, which was published uh, a long time ago in 2013. Now, Bees is a real-time dice-rolling game for two to five players. Players are rolling their dice and using them to beat out their opponent's rolls to claim hive tiles, basically in an area control, area majority kind of thing. If my dice beat out your dice, I get to take the tile. You're then going to use that tile to build your own personal hive. Once time runs out, you take a look and add up your scores, saying whoever has the best hive wins the game. All right, well, as long as it's Bees and not Murder Hornets, we're all good. <laughs> And that's Bees by Marcus Ross and Kara Ryan. All right, up next, we're jumping back to RPGs. You see our, our trend here. We're going back and forth. I got a really unique looking one here that, that is fascinating to me. This is a map-making RPG called Companion's Tale. This is by Laura Simpson uh, with Dev. I apologize for this right now, but Perkayastha. 
I do apologize, Dev. Uh, Laura also worked on Dialect. Now, Dialect was a multi-award winning, very well-known game about language learning and how languages die. Uh, Laura was also featured in the Pound Feminism or Hashtag Feminism, a nano game anthology. Now, Companion's Tale is a GM-less storytelling map-making game where you're playing a hero's companions. So the hero's acting and doing all these things, and you're the companions telling the tales about what the hero did, but whose version of the story is the one that's going to get written down in the annals of history. Now, this was nominated for the 2019 Emmy for Best Game. Note, Best Game. That's huge. Absolutely. I don't know if this game is necessarily in my wheelhouse, but just reading through the Kickstarter gotten me to queue up the uh, episode of One Shot that featured it to learn more about Companions by Laura Simpson and Dev Perkyasta. I apologize, Dev. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perkyasta is about as close as I can see. I think Sean did a better job than I did there. All right, up next is a game that was brought to my attention through the Black Lives Matter movement that's still going strong across the world right now, and that is Rap Gods by Omari Akil, who is the co-founder and lead designer for Board Game Brothers. In addition to Rap Gods, he also worked on Oh My Gourds last year. Rap Gods puts you in the role of an up-and-coming hip-hop artist just starting down their path to greatness. You outperform your opponents and collect the most plaques by taking over cities, hitting career milestones, as well as starting beef with the other rappers. Good luck getting a hard copy of this game right now. As though, as far as I can see, they sold out every copy available, uh, definitely in North America, uh, through fundraising efforts. Uh, and drain their physical supplies. But, good news, the game has been ported to Tabletopia. So, you can check it out there. That's Rap Gods by Omari Akil. All right, up next, I want to talk about Edrigor. This is a fantasy RPG inspired by the mythology and lore of native tribal peoples from across the world, with a specific focus on the Lakota folklore. It was designed by Alan Turner. Alan has also worked on a number of other games, including Exalted, Vampire the Masquerade, Mythic D6, and Scion. Edrigor uses the popular Fate 3.0 system, and what really caught my eye about this system is that it is a fantasy game that is based on Native American tropes versus your standard European mythology we normally see in fantasy RPGs. Something completely and totally different from your usual orcs, dwarves, and elves. Yeah, and that's Edrigor by Alan Turner. All right, I want to leave off with something that's coming soon. This isn't quite out there yet, and that's Swords Fall, an Afropunk RPG from Brandon Dixon, which was kickstarted in 2019. Now, this is Brandon's first RPG project, though he is a contributor to the World Building Magazine. Now, here's a blurb from Brandon on what Swords Fall is. Swordsfall isn't just a setting for an Afropunk game, it's a world. It's a dive into pre-colonial Africa for rich lore you've never heard of before. It's an exploration into a world where most of the faces are dark, yet aren't considered to be one corner of the globe. It's a world where women hold power equal to men, and the merit of one's soul is what propels them through life. It's a world where spirits aren't to be feared, instead they are to be embraced. It's a time where we know that rep sorry, it's a time where we know that representation matters. This project is an effort to add that spirit to the way I know best. Narrative fiction in the nerdiest of flavors. Now, at this time, the RPG is just getting off the ground. What is out now is there's a quick start adventure out there, which you can find on Drive Through RPG. And there were some novels published through the Kickstarter that are available through Amazon. Now, the rules are due, I think it was by third quarter 2020, though, depending on the state of the world with things going on right now, it would be very understandable if they were delayed. All right. Well, that was Swords Fall by Brandon Dixon. All right, finally, I just want to say that I wish this list was longer. While doing research for this post, I saw a statistic from Omar Akil from uh, Board Game Brothers that stated, and this was a 2018 stat, that 12, only 12% 12 of all board games published are from black designers. And I got to say, I knew that number would be small, but I didn't think it'd be that low. Like, that's crazy. I personally would love to see this number grow substantially as the industry 
improves in the coming months and years. I look forward to a new wave of black game designers, which of course, I'm still probably going to be buying a lot of money, uh, spending a lot of money on, on Kickstarters from Eric Lang. So, but I'd love to see the new blood out there. All right, well, that's it for our list of great games designed by black game designers. I'm going to head over to that lobby and see if any of the awesome folk gathered there have any other games of their own to show. So, uh, Danielle was commenting that uh, uh, Companion's Tale, fantastic yes. game. Oh, uh, good. Someone's play. I It sounded really interesting. It sounded really neat. I like the change of perspective. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily something I would get, but again, I, I really want to listen to that one-shot uh, episode right. that, that plays it because it, it, it was interesting enough that just reading through the blurb on Kickstarter mm -hmm. completely had me hooked. Yeah, it sounds like the kind of thing, kind of like Kingdom and Micro, Microscope, Microscope, sorry, trying to blank yep, on the name. Yep. It sounds like that style of game with a little bit more to it, yep. which sounds awesome. So I do see Ryan was noting that he had no interest in the Warhammer setting, but loved Chaos in the Old World. So that's cool. That just goes to show how good a game it is. It's a yep. fantastic game. I, I know what I have on my pile of shame I need to do is I have the foot player expansion where you play Skaven, but you need five players. Like you can't throw Skaven in unless you have five. Like you oh, have okay. to have all the other gods for some, not Skaven, the Horde Rat specifically, but yes, Skaven. And they have another way to do it. And I was thinking about it as I was saying it. I, I think there is one game that came before this. From what I understand, Avalon Hills Dune, everyone has a different goal. So uh, Chaos and Old World wouldn't be the first game to do it because I'm at least some of the factions in Dune have different endings, but I think each of the five or six factions in Dune have a different ending. But it, uh, Chaos and Old World was the first one I saw that did that. Right. Uh, yeah, so Ryan also pointed out that we've got the, the <laughs> punk in 2020, but not the cyber. But there is someone who has stepped forward to offer cybernetic eyes to the multitude of media who were injured during protests recently, which I thought was one of the most cyberpunk things I've ever read. So uh, th I think we got a bit of both going on. We're getting there. I actually saw a great uh, video the other day on YouTube and it was, it, it said something about, you know, cyberpunk is here now or, or some cybernetics are here now. And it was this video of this um, woman doing some athletic stuff. And I watched it three times before I noticed that she didn't actually have lower legs. Wow. It was completely uh, prosthetic. Yep. Um, and it was just sort of one of those, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's we're a, getting there. You see some of the, the, the things they're now using for like bomb disposal or to get people out of hazardous situations where there could be rock slides or whatever. Some of the robots they've come up with. It's, I don't know. There's, there's some cyberpunk yeah. there too. We're getting, there definitely we're, getting is. Pretty, we're getting pretty cyber, but we are definitely in a pretty heavily punk ish yes. time. Right. Particularly yeah. now. Yeah. Right. Particularly <laughs> now. Yes. Um, yeah. The other thing we are definitely getting is the media manipulation and manipulation through, uh, Largely funded groups, I'll say, instead of corporations, because it's not just corporations. Yeah, it's not just corporations, but the corporations we, are definitely, definitely there. Yeah, they're definitely I mean, there. I mean, we, yeah. But that's good. I, I, and, and I do apologize if we missed a specific designer. There obviously are other designers out there. Um, I have played some of the games on the list. I mainly went with Board Game Geek or RPG Geek ratings, as well as just my usual search to see what people recommend. If I didn't mention your game, it's not due to trying to exclude you or saying your game is garbage. Absolutely. And uh, for better or worse, I know some there are some concerns about it, but uh, you know there are a lot of lists like this getting generated right now because a lot of people aren't necessarily aware, uh, yes. as they should be, of the population of designers out there who uh, you know are black or people of colors or transgendered or gay or whatever you may be that's not you know, a cis white old male uh, um, out there uh, and to get that different experience because they can bring something to a game that we can't conceive of. Fair. All right. Uh, so finally, if you've got a... Oh, you have, you... Oh, I thought you were going to do this part first. Oh, yeah. So that's it for our main <laughs> topic tonight. You're highlighting things and I'm... That's yeah, it yeah. for our main topic tonight. Remember, you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Click on Gaming Advice at the top of the page.
Uh, finally, if you've got a game or game night question, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com.